Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. We're going to wrap up today with a special selection, which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's special selection comes at us from Jacob. This song is a collaboration between Mariusz Duda from Riverside and Stephen Wilson from Porcupine Tree, and is a tribute to Alec Wildey, who was a huge fan of them both. Backstory for... The song that I got from comment section, Alec Wildey counted Marius Duda and Stephen Wilson as his two favorite musicians and started street teams for both Riverside and Porcupine Tree, hence how they came to know of him. According to Wilson, Wildey worked his butt off promoting their music and they both really appreciated his efforts, which included many hours of pasting concert flyers all over town. When he was diagnosed with cancer, he requested that, as his favorite musicians, they put one of his poems to music and perform it together. This is how the song came about. Alec Wildey wrote the poem, uh, Mariusz Duda created the music, and he and Wilson produced the song together. So Wildey's name should be credited. Alright, that is a very interesting backstory for a song, how it was created. Um, and I think it's also a really great showcasing of some of the love that Porcupine Tree and Riverside have for their fans that they would do this. This is very uh, uncharacteristic, I think, of most artists. Uh, certainly, it's one thing to uh, show a little bit of recognition for massive fans, but I think it's entirely a, a different thing altogether to put one of their poems to music and to collaborate with someone who I don't know that either of these people, Stephen or Mariusz, have ever collaborated uh, with before. So, let's dive into this and check out the song... The Old Peace. You could be wise spending a lifetime Under your tree watching apples fall from above you could be lost, aimless in your hometown Nothing in that moment matters more Than the book in your hand And I see impressions and I see fingerprints Footsteps, tears in the rain But nothing is more perfect Than the smell of harmony A minimalistic track so far, but very effective one. It's the tiniest bit of glockenspiel back there. Actually, that might be vibraphone. You've got your solitude and I've got my peace. And nothing in that moment matters more. If only in just this one fragment together it grows This tree may be aimless, may be lost Right where I need to be And I see impressions and I see fingerprints Footsteps, tears in the rain But nothing is more perfect Than the smell of harmony and I see impressions and I see fingerprints, footsteps, tears in the rain. Such a warm but resolution there. Is more perfect than the smell of harmony. The texture layering between the bells and the vocals is really well done. Really wide vocal harmonies. But nothing is more perfect than the 
One of the first change-ups all song. Reducing the guitar line down, making room for other instruments. Just very chill, calm, peaceful, if I'll borrow a word from the title. It's interesting to hear that core rhythm from the guitar earlier be present here in other instrumentation. It almost is like a, a fragmentation and splitting apart and passing around several of the components of that original guitar line and doling it out to a variety of instruments to make a more fleshed out concept than what the guitar could have done alone. Yeah, I mean, that's just a gorgeous track from start to finish. So, it is a bit on the simpler side, at least for the first half of it, maybe the first 60% uh, of it, we have a single guitar line with... Well, it does a lot of things. Here's, the, here's what I was talking about, right? It's simple yet effective. And a lot of that comes down to musical efficiency. Having one instrument carry melody and harmony and rhythm all by itself. We have the bum, 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 bum. We already introduced that rhythmic structure inside of the guitar here at the beginning. We also have the melodic movement throughout the guitar. It doesn't just stay on one note. It is constantly moving around, rising and falling in pitch. But these pitches are also outlining chords, and you can feel the chord progression between the two chords that we shift between from the guitar's melodic movement. It presents everything that needs to be understood, or everything that the song... What, what am I trying to say? It presents everything the listener needs to understand what the song is attempting to do. Very efficient writing. Just put everything into one instrument. On top of this, we do get the vocal lines. <clears throat> These come in two forms, the singular vocal and the harmonized vocals. These harmonies continue to expand and expand, moving from two voices to three voices to, at one point, five voices. Uh, I love hearing the expansion of this. To me, it represents a type of strength. It could be unity of a group, but it could also be a unification of a self. I just see this idea that what was once singular and uh, more timid is now a very full sound represented by multitudes. That could represent a lot of ideas or metaphors 
Uh, and we'll probably explore some of that when we hit the lyrics, but I do like this consistent growth as the song goes on. The vocals become wider, the harmonies become uh, even larger, and of course they continue to push into these very peaceful, harmonious chords coming from the, the vocals. It's just gorgeous stuff all over the place. Um, and that is pretty much a description of <laughs> like the opening three minutes of this. Uh, we do have little ornamental things. We have a vibraphone, I believe, that comes in, some sort of bells. Um, we have a nice little violin towards the three-minute mark. It pops up for just a, a few lines. Um, I thought it was interesting. I was like, oh, we have the violin, but the song's almost over. It wasn't almost over. It was close, but the violin also we don't hear again. <laughs> so we get like eight bars of it. Um, and it fills in the same spot that the vibraphone did earlier, which is just ornamentation uh, that sits around the guitar and vocals. From here, though, we do hit the midpoint, and something does change. It's a scattering, a fragmentation of ideas. How I spoke about the guitar being efficient filling in all the roles that you would need aside from ornamentation, all of the core foundational roles of music, we have now split that up. We will still use the rhythm, but the drums, we're, we're going to have some hand drums here. They're going to emphasize this rhythm. It's also still going to be a part of the melody, but one instrument is going to carry it for the first two beats, and then another instrument is going to carry it for the next two beats. And so we do have a little bit of this call and response, where one instrument plays a couple of notes and then holds out their last one, and another instrument plays over that and then holds out a note, and the first instrument comes back in and plays the next idea on top of the other person holding out their note. Um, the harmonic information comes through in the variety of instruments that pop up to play both counterpoint and harmony alongside this core melody that's been fractured out like this. We have instruments that sit on the bottom and give us chordal information, purely chordal information. This is the fragmentation I was talking about. We took something that was entirely cohesive and took it apart piecemeal and doled that out to several different instruments to create something that is fundamentally very similar. It is definitely an expansion on the idea. There are new concepts added in. As I mentioned, there's harmony and counterpoint on top of the melody that the guitar originally played, but it is primarily what we heard earlier, just larger, expanded, uh, further explored, added depth to it. It is the concept of the singular becoming the multitude, but still being a singular entity. The music does not become fractured because of it. The idea is still solid. Every instrument still works together to provide a unified experience through this section. It just expands on it in ways that you can't do by yourself. You need multiple instruments to explore all of the facets of this idea that was presented earlier. It is to me, again, about a singular doing the most you can by yourself, pulling all the heavy lifting and then passing that weight on to others who could help as well in a way that doesn't alter or change the end result in a drastic way. It is still the original vision. It is just more fully fleshed out as more people present more ways you can do things. And I really like this. I have no idea what the lyrics are about. I picked up a couple of lines, but I can't really make any sense about them based on the two or three that I heard. Uh, there's probably a lot of context in the rest of the lyrics. It's a very lyric dense song. Um, but I, I am hoping to explore some of this stuff in the lyrics um, about about singular. Man, how do I explain this? because it's not really about the fracturing. Like, I don't want the lyrics to explore something being diminished. It's about uh, splitting apart to become a larger whole. I suppose, in a way, because I always seem to come back to forest for the trees as a metaphor, uh, in this case, it is a tree becoming a forest by spreading its seed and, and utilizing the help of more trees. 
they're still all a part of that original tree, but the tree couldn't, be, couldn't have been a forest by itself. It's a group effort, and the area is more beautiful for it. And that's sort of how I feel about this. It isn't about fracturing. It is about losing essence of oneself. It's just about having help and creating something more than you could ever have, a, a, a greater than the sum of the parts, because there's more parts. If there's only one part, you don't get a sum. You don't have, <laughs> there's nothing additional to it. Uh, and so it can only be equal to what it is. That's kind of what I get out of all this. Emotionally, atmospherically, it is just gorgeous. I mentioned at one part that it is a chill and peaceful, to borrow a word from the title. Um, and it is, from start to finish. There's very little tension in here, very little dissonance. Um, even when we get to the chord progression, it's not really one that relies too much on a, a strong element of tension to progress itself. There is some some stress, some imbalance in that second chord, just because you need it to create direction to lead back to a resolution. You can't resolve from something that isn't unresolved. And unresolution tends to be tension or dissonance. Um, and so we do have a little bit in there, but for the most part, it is very peaceful all the time. And it just, it feels really good to be within, to explore and to see how they expand upon it and further dig into the ideas from their side musically so that we can, as listeners, fully appreciate the sound that they start with and the depth that was there always. Um, so with all that said, I don't think there's anything else I want to add on to this uh, other than I just love all the instruments. Once we hit that the, the last two minutes or so, they just kept adding more and more instruments to it. And I love that. It, it falls in line with my, my reading of the music, but it also, just from a purely sonic perspective, sounds great. I love uh, groups with lots of instrumentation, lots of voices to pull from, and the way that all these voices work together. So let me hit some lyrics on this, and then we'll wrap this one up. Real quick, before we get into the lyrics, which I found in the comment section, which is also how I ran into some of this other uh, information as well, somebody had mentioned that it isn't just that these two people put one of uh, Alex's poems to music, but it was also the process of finding the right poem and then creating the right fluidity of the poem to turn it into lyrics, that there's a lot more... Um, work that went into this than simply writing music and singing some stuff over that uh, these people didn't write. And I really appreciate that angle. It's something that I completely forgot about as I tend to approach the music in a, a bit of a vacuum. What is the song? What is it doing? Sometimes I really get lost within that and forget about possibly the process in the creation of it. <clears throat> well, that said, uh, the lyrics are about finding a personal center, finding a home where you can find that peace. It says, you could be wise, spend in a lifetime under your tree, watching apples fall from above. You could be lost, still you see your hometown and nothing in that moment matters more than the book in your hand. Then we get to what I believe is the chorus as it's repeated four times, five times in this song. It says, and I see impressions, and I see fingerprints, footsteps, tears in the rain, but nothing is more perfect than the smell of harmony. And, uh, you know, to me, I, I read this as change, footprints, uh, fingerprints, impressions. This is all change. You don't make footprints or you don't leave fingerprints unless you affect the world around you. It's, uh, I mean, that's exactly what it is. It's, it's visual, uh, representation of people affecting their world, their environment. Even Tears in the Rain speaks about more, uh, moving away from a physical element to an emotional one. It's about change. Nobody just cries for no reason. Cries happen as a response to a stimuli. It is also about change. 
And he ends all of this with nothing is more perfect than the smell of harmony. And I find this to be really interesting because it seems like it has nothing to do with the, the previous section, which is about changing the world around you or being affected by the change around you or witnessing the change around you. But I really like this because what if that change is harmonious? What if everything in your environment, in, in the nature that surrounds you, is working in peace? To me, that comes together. It's about finding this center in a world that doesn't stop changing. Finding harmony in that chaos. The next and final verse kicks off with, You've got your solitude and I've got my peace, and nothing in that moment matters more, if only in just this one fragment together it grows. So we're a bit different here. Similar, we are both happy within our element, but our elements are different. And they might clash, but that clashing might grow something. There will be something new coming out of this combination of your solitude and my peace. And uh, he ends it with a couple of lines that I'm not 100% sure on, but I think the purpose is to signify being lost. It says, this tree... Maybe I must, maybe lost, right where I need to be. There's hesitation, there's spaces, the sentences themselves are fragmented, not even getting to see the full elements of them. But the concept, I think, is not knowing where you are and realizing that maybe that's the best place for you. Again, finding harmony within the dissonance, within the chaos. It is a song about finding a home. Not a place to live, but a physical, emotional, spiritual center. Uh, a way to be at peace in the most chaotic of times because this world is not peaceful by design. Change happens all the time. You gotta be okay with that. I've been trying to tie this back to the music, and the best interpretation I have, at least based on my reading of the music, is simply that once you let go of the self and accept the environment around you, you can find that peace, and you can find that peace within the environment. It isn't just you alone carrying all of this weight anymore. It isn't you fighting against nature. It's you finding your place within it. Finding out what your song sounds like when sung by multitudes. Having other people help lift up your tune. Which is also kind of what this song is. A collaboration between three people, none of whom would have written it by themselves. Having other people help lift up your tune. Those are my thoughts on Mariusz Duda, Stephen Wilson, and Alec Wildey's The Old Peace. Let me know what you thought of this song. If there's anything that stood out to you, anything you'd like to add on to what I said, or correct me on. If you have your own thoughts, opinions, or perspectives about it, toss that stuff down in the comment section as well. Above that, in the description box, you can find a link to this song if you'd like to check out more of it. As far as I can tell, this is one of the few places that has it. It's not on Spotify. Uh, there's also a link to Linktree that'll take you to, uh, you know, my links and stuff. I don't want to throw that up. It feels kind of tacky to do the usual self-promotion stuff at the end of uh, a song like this. I don't know. Um... But if you could, like, subscribe, ring the bell. If you could, go over to their channel too. And, you know, pick up uh, a little spiritually after Alec and promote this song much like he promoted his favorite bands if you enjoy it like that. It only has, uh, well, has 600,000 views. That's a bit more than I expected. But I did see a lot of comments like, no way, I didn't know Stephen Wilson and Mar uh, Mariusz Duda did a collab together. So it obviously doesn't have the uh, the widespread promotion and uh, 
knowledge about its existence that I think something like this would. So again, if you don't mind, uh, subscribe, share the link around, all that kind of stuff. Um, that wraps it up for today. I'll be back tomorrow. We're going to finish off this week's theme of retro video game music. And uh, we'll check out some brand new music from somebody who we, we featured on the channel before. Uh, Dan, yeah, Dan Kane, uh, who actually, the only time I think we've listened to is part of a collab. So it'll be interesting to listen to his stuff, uh, his solo work. All right, until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos.